Kaume, OFR, I represent the people of Anambra Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, thank you for giving me the opportunity to stand up to contribute to this um, report. Mr. President, first of all, I want to say that I'm very happy with this exercise. My commendation was first of all go to the National Judicial Council, chaired by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. These nominations, when the vacancies exist, uh, existed, everybody had interest in it because it is only important that we have judicial officers who will serve the cause of justice in this country. The NJC has done a great job by saving from the array of qualified justices, by saving out these 11 noble justices of the Court of Appeal for elevation to the Supreme Court. We are in Nigeria, we have been here and we have been following a lot of events, both in the judiciary. I can attest to the fact that the NJC put forward very credible, noble justices of the Court of Appeal. And also to thank the president for putting them forward. But if the president hadn't brought them here, we would not have the benefit of having this uh, people to be confirmed by the Committee on Judiciary after screening and presented to us. My happiness is also drawn from page nine. Page nine of this report. If you look at the distribution of the 21 justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria as presently constituted, Mr. President, you will immediately see that great job was done in balancing nominations across the six geopolitical zones. There is no zone in Nigeria who will say they don't have somebody who is credible at the apex court. Every zone had minimum of three justices at the Supreme Court now. Only four, only three has, only three have one additional. So we have federal character firmly observed in these nominations. Not only that, the names that were put forward are names we have been reading their judgments. Those who have been used to litigations who know that quality judgments are priceless. And these noble justices of the court that have been brought here are known to be people who have written landmark judgments, landmark judgments. So I'm very happy today that people who deserve this elevation were the people who were put forward. Nobody can contest their integrity. From the report, no petitions. Not only that there were no petitions, those of us who have been reading judgments delivered by these noble justices, can tell you that we are in for a good deal in the judiciary. So I join my colleagues in saying that for the fact that the federal character is observed and for the fact that the justices so put forward are noble justices of integrity and good character, we should go ahead and confirm them without any reservation. I saw so my dear colleagues, Henry Sedaka Dixon, Bayelsa West. First, Mr. President, I rise to second and contribute to the debate to the fact that this Senate should confirm Mr. President's 11 Supreme Court nominees who have gone through the entire meal from security screening up to screening by the statutory agencies the NJC, capping it all, and also the advisory uh, committee, uh, the, the Federal Judicial Council, and all of them have done their job. 
And yesterday, this matter was referred to the Committee on Justice, where, incidentally, I'm a member. Mr. President, I rise also to, on behalf of the senators from Bielsa, uh, thank the President for the nomination of a justice from the great state of Bielsa representing the South South Zone uh, in the person of the Honorable Justice Mo Aseimo Abraham Adume, Justice of the Court of Appeal, now nominated to represent the South South Zone on the branch of the Supreme Court. I want to thank the President for this, and we congratulate not only him, but all the other nominees. Uh, Justice Adume is very well known as a very competent, trusted, and reliable justice who has done his best and will continue to do his best. And Mr. President, even for those who may not have personal knowledge of the other nominees, there's nobody here who may not have heard or may not have read about their judgments and the work they have continued to do. A number of them have completely, in fact all of them, have completely dedicated their lives to the administration of justice. Some of them from magistracy, spanning over some 20-something years, 30-something years, in the business of adjudication and administration of justice. So we congratulate all of them. The only point I would like to make before I sit, Mr. President, is to support the uh, motion, uh, support the sentiment expressed by the Senate President Emeritus when he raised the issue of the need to draw attention to all of us here in the legislature and the executive to work together to address the challenges facing the judiciary. For so long, so much lip service has been paid to the problems and challenges of the judiciary. Happily, in this 10th Senate, in the course of the retreat and other activities, under your leadership, you have made some proclamations which are very heartwarming. That is to say, committing this Senate and the National Assembly of which you are chairman to a broad and comprehensive justice sector reform. And even at the committee level, under the able chairmanship of my dear brother and colleague, M.T. Monguno, very experienced parliamentarian, and also Attorney General, my colleague as Attorney General, he is also working very hard, and the whole committee behind him, to work with the Attorney General and all other stakeholders, the bar, with your active support, to move for a broad justice sector reform. And also, subsequently, a broad police and law enforcement and criminal justice reform, so that we can now address and create a general conducive working environment for the judiciary. Um, the conditions are quite pitiable. I don't want us to go into all those details, but it needs to be reformed. So I want to support that the nominees be screened so that they can assume their duties. But before I sit, one point was made, which Mr. President and my colleagues need to know. The leader of the Senate, who was also, uh, who is also a member of that committee, raised a very vital point. And this Senate should note it and should also perhaps pass it to the executive, which is appointing authority, that here we are screening 11 justices for the Supreme Court at the same time. Very commendable act the president has done. But we shouldn't be doing this at this time. For so long, these vacancies have existed. They could have been filled long before now. We had a situation where areas in this court in this country were left without representation, leading to discussions and accusations about perceived marginalization. Even the perception of it was not good, especially representation at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court being the ultimate court in this country and structured in a way that has representation from all parts of this country is important, Mr. President. 
while, while, while looking at this nomination, that we should also pass that message that any time these vacancies occur, they should be filled promptly. There are, there are fitting, very qualified people from all parts of this country to fill those vacancies, either at the Federal High Court, at the Court of Appeal, or especially at the Supreme Court, any time those vacancies arise. I thought, Mr. President, that we should draw that attention as a matter of general concern uh, to the appointing authorities at this time that we are discussing this, and finally commit this Senate and the National Assembly under your chairmanship to a broad and comprehensive justice sector reform that can address conditions of service, can address delay in the justice delivery system, so that will not be a laughing stock before the world. Thank you very much. Well, in taking the decision yesterday to screen our 11 justices off camera, yes. because the questions members and people might want to ask might be uh, not really good for our national television. I thank Mr. President and the Senate yes. for taking it to committee good. of the judiciary. Because it was live yesterday, and it wasn't going to be really good. But I want to join Senator Ahmed Lawa in begging the Senate to look at the budget of the judiciary, not only in the Supreme Court or Court of Appeal. Even the magistrates, the state courts, they're in a mess. When you go to see a judge, of a state court, you will think that is is coming with Okada. Is going living in the beast of the people he's supposed to judge, and these things are not the way they were before. Most of you, who were governors and all the rest of them, we did better in providing accommodations for these people where they will live, quarters and all the rest of them, cars to go to work. So I, I plead with my colleagues in the Senate. Let us look at the budget of the federal judiciary, especially also in the Court of Appeal and industrial courts, all the courts. When you have relations in these courts, you will find out that they are not even coping up with life. So how can they give good ju 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 justice in the open court of law? It's going to be really difficult, Mr. President. And also, it is not right to leave justice of Supreme Court for so long. I'm adding my voice to uh, former Governor Bayasa that you will leave, like Southeast, we, we were left for almost seven years without a judge in the Supreme Court. Entire Southeast. Not only one. I mean, there were vacancies, but the key to this vacancy was a problem. So, Mr. President, I want to thank the pre President of Federal Republic, and also thank you for the speedy passage yeah. that we are going to be doing to this, yeah. this afternoon. Thank you. So they can go back and face the, their work. There are a lot of cases coming from states, in the 36 states. The uh, Court of Appeal is truly short of their members now, as of today. So I think if my colleagues quickly do this as a Mr. President, we relate to the uh, President of the Republic, we will be able to have Justice of Supreme Court by Monday morning. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I am Mohamed Tahir Monguno. I represent Borno North Senatorial District. This is the report of the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on the confirmation of nomination of 11 Honorable Justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Preamble, the Senate in its plenary sitting on Wednesday, 20 December 2023, deliberated on the request of Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces for the confirmation of nomination of the underlisted Honorable Justices designate of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and repaired same to the Senate Committee on Human Rights, Judiciary Human Rights and Legal Matters for Legislative Action. The nominees are Honorable Justice Jimwe Hanatu Sanki, Honorable Justice Umwana Ua, 
Honorable Justice Chioma Nwosu Iheme, Honorable Justice Haruna Simon Samani, Honorable Justice Mo Abraham Adumein, Honorable Justice Obande Pestus Oguya, Honorable Justice Stephen Jonah Ada, Honorable Justice Habib Adewele Abiru, Honorable Justice Jamilu Wai Tukur, Honorable Justice Abubakar Sadiq Umar, and Honorable Justice Mohamed Baba Idris. Your appointments were made pursuant to Section 231, Subsection 2 and 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, which requires that the appointment of a person to the Office of Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria shall be made by the President on the recommendation of the National Judicial Council, subject to confirmation of such nomination by the Senate. After the referral, the committee requested for and received the curriculum vitae and other supporting documents of the nominees and invited them to appear before it for screening exercise. On Wednesday, 20 December 2023, the nominees appeared before the committee. The committee examined their curriculum vitae and other supporting documents and thereafter screened them. The committee interviewed the nominees and received explanations regarding their qualification, experience, suitability, exposure, competence, and integrity to assume the positions of justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. The nominees were screened in the following order. So I don't need to go through the order you have. Is, is their CVs, their curriculum details and what have you. So I will proceed straight to page eight. Page eight of the document. Yes. The page eight, which is the response to questions, then findings, and then I will go to finally the recommendations. In response to questions put forward by the committee, the nominees individually and collectively demonstrated sufficient knowledge and firm grasp of the law and other topical, contemporary, and jurisprudential issues. Findings. The committee, after the screening exercise, deliberated on the nominees' suitability for appointments as justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and hereby make the following findings. That the appointment of the nominees satisfy the requirements of the provisions of Section 231, Subsection 2, and Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. That there is no criminal record or adverse report found against the nominees as record checks and other forms of investigation by relevant security agencies did not reveal any negative traits against them. That there is no petition against the appointment, appointments of the nominees. That the nominees possess the requisite leadership qualities required of judicial officers to exercise restraint and uphold the dignity of the court and the litigants in the discharge of their official functions. That the nominees are fit and proper persons for appointment as justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. General observations. For the avoidance of doubt, we wish to observe that this appointment satisfy the constitutional provision of section 231 subsection 3, which stipulates a minimum of 15 years post call experience to qualify for appointment as Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. It should be noted that these appointments became necessary following the retirements and unfortunate demise of some justices of the, from the geopolitical zones from which these current appointments were made. By virtue of paragraph 13A and 1, third schedule to the Constitution of Federal, uh, Federal Judicial Service of the Constitution, the Federal Judicial Service Commission is empowered to advise the National Judicial Council in nominating persons for appointment as justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Currently, the composition of the Supreme Court of Nigeria as per the geopolitical zone is as follows. 
It's as stated in the report. Let me go straight to the recommendation. That is 6 0. The Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters, after careful scrutiny of the curriculum vitae and other accompanying documents of the nominees, and having satisfied about their exposure, experience, comportment, performance, qualification, and integrity, recommends that the Senate do confirm the nominations of Honorable Justice Jumai Hanatu Sanki, one, two, Honorable Justice Chide Bere Uwama Uwa, three, Honorable Justice Choma Igondu Ingozu Iheme, four, Honorable Justice Haruna Simon Samani, five, Honorable Justice Mo Asemin Abraham Adumain, Six Honorable Justice Obande Pestus Ogunea. Seven Honorable Justice Stephen Jonah Ada. Eight Honorable Justice Habib Adewele Olu Muiwa Abiru. And nine Honorable Justice Jamil Y. Tukur. Ten Honorable Justice Abubakar Sadiq Umar. The last and not the least, Honorable Justice Mohammed Idris for appointment as Justices of the Supreme Court. I so move. Second, the motion and prayers for the confirmation of uh, the nominated uh, justices for the Supreme Court. They are all eminently qualified for these uh, appointments. And uh, uh, I, I, I so support their nomination. But Mr. President, in doing so, I would like to just uh, note that are the intentment of the Constitution does not limit the appointment of Supreme Court justices to the Court of Appeal. And we have seen that all these justices that are being recommended for appointment to the Supreme Court are all Court of Appeal. We have scholars, eminent scholars, we have eminent practitioners of the law that are also qualified for appointment. If we just uh, take the example of late Justice Nikki Tobi, who was at one time the, uh, the, the, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Law in the University of Meduguri. You know, he was appointed from the university straight to the Supreme Court. And his contribution to legal practice in this country is immense. So the point I'm trying to make is that in making these appointments, we shouldn't limit our nominations from the Court of Appeal only. I so submit. Thank you. The screening of uh, the nominees was referred to them just yesterday. But they had to walk around the clock to make sure they conclude the screening uh, in this record time. You are really, uh, you've done well, and we commend you for doing a job well done. Mr. President, not only that, uh, they have been able to do a proper job screening. Went deeply to find out whether they have the required pedigree to perform their functions as, as Supreme Court justices. And in line with what they've done, their findings have shown nothing negative in respect of these nominees. In fact, what turns out their findings was, uh, were all positive, you know, in favor of the nominees. The general, the general observation as well turns out to be very, very good in respect uh, of these nominees. Everything. I therefore request that my colleagues to, without much ado, give our approval to these uh, for the, I mean, to, for confirming, for the confirmation of this committee, uh, nominees, because everything that has been done here has shown, have shown that uh, these people are properly put in place. They are well qualified. They do not have any uh, negative thing to be attached to each and every one of them. Therefore, I request all of you to give your notes so that they can be confirmed. I just submit, Mr. President. President, distinguished colleagues, 
My name is Ahmed Lawan. I represent UAB North Senatorial District. Mr. President, let me join my colleagues who spoke previously to commend the Committee on Judiciary and Human Rights. Definitely, they have worked so hard to make it possible for us to consider this report this morning. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my remarks will be on a little bit of the quality of the people we have screened and about to confirm because so much has been said about them. Mine is particularly to call the attention of the legislature, the National Assembly particularly, and the executive arm of government that our judiciary, like our legislature, needs more and more resources. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, those of us who have interacted with our judiciary at this federal level, we know how hard it is for them to do their work and decide their mandates. The time has come, Mr. President, for both the legislature and the executive arms to give the judiciary a worthwhile financial attention. We should give them more resources because they can do better. It's not enough to increase the number of justices. Yes, that will reduce some burden, but the burden will be less far less, actually, if they have more resources to work with. I believe it's the same thing with the legislature. Even the people who have no contact with the legislature, National Assembly particularly, they will tell you there is so much resources, so much money in the National Assembly. Why is it? There is nothing with a budget of 139, 140 billion annual budget in a budget of 19 trillion. How can someone tell me that the National Assembly has so much resources? But I'm not speaking particularly for the National Assembly today. I'm speaking for the judiciary, Mr. President. And I know that we can do something. Let's try it from this budget. Let's give them more resources so that we can hold them responsible if they don't perform. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for the privilege. The Republic of Nigeria, I thank you for the privilege that I am doing my first presentation at this presentation as a lawyer. Sir, first, let me also commend the committee for doing a thorough, thorough job. And let me appreciate Mr. President for this presentation as this timely hours. The crop of the, uh, the justices that have been presented here are, I will say, part of the best in Nigeria. For legal practitioners, if you, lead, if you read their judgments, you know what I'm talking about. But of particular note, Mr. President, let me thank the Senate. I know they will approve. For the first time, we have a Supreme Court Justice from Plateau State. Justice Sankey is from Plateau. This is the first time that we are celebrating a Supreme Court Justice too in Nigeria. So for this alone, even for the sympathy for people of Plateau State, I think this, this uh, uh, presentation, these people should be given as related confirmation. So I use the opportunity once again to thank because the people, my good people of Plateau, as I said that I should also extend through Mr. President 
of the Senate, our commendation and our appreciation to Mr. President for this wonderful presentation and also for bringing in another set of very credible judges to the Supreme Court of Nigeria. I thank you for this privilege, Mr. President. For oh, encouraging members of my committee uh, vertically to speak on this matter. I join Senator Lalong and the chairman of the committee that of the judiciary for a good job. And I do appreciate that they had to put in extra hours, given the limited time that they have. Mr. President, all the comments so far agree that these people nominated are competent and qualified to be elevated to the Supreme Court. The only comment I have heard from the gentleman who spoke about the academia belong to the realm of the future, whether this is desirable in the future or not. What is before us, for me, is only one question. Is there any of these justices who, in the opinion of any of us, is not a fit and proper person to be elevated to the Supreme Court of the land? The committee report says all of them are competent, and they have given their reason. I endorse in total, and I urge my colleagues to support and endorse the report of the committee without any amendment. And I commend your, your strategy, Mr. President, in ensuring that we have a quality review by, by um, referring this matter to a subcommittee. At that level, they are able to do more justice than is otherwise possible in a larger gathering. Mr. President, I so support and I commend the committee on the judiciary. Thank you, sir. And other legal matters in the Senate for doing past and thorough job. Mr. President, uh, when I came, I had the comment of uh, Deputy Senate President, and I think the gentlemen of the judiciary that follow ranks from the some of them, magistrate to higher court, higher court to court, appeal now to Supreme Court. And as we discussed yesterday, Mr. President, in the uh, executive session, that most of, or almost all of them, they go under one scrutiny to another from DSS baiting presidential baiting and the other uh, judiciary process. Mr. President, looking at the, what the Committee of Judiciary has done, I'll follow through with the distinguished Senator Barrow Jibril to my colleagues to approve the work done and pass the confirmation of the Supreme Court justices. Considering, yes, we have done what we are supposed to do, and uh, we are at the badge of each one of all, every one of us, or almost all, getting closer to uh, Confile or final submission of our respective report as chairman and uh, other submission so that we can give colleagues opportunity to go and tidy up. Some of, them, some of us may be here to tomorrow, and uh, some of us immediately after the session may be getting our preparation for our vacation for Christmas happily as we agreed yesterday, they're coming back on the 29th. So Mr. President, I'm telling my colleagues and you to, maybe if it's allowed to even put the question to go ahead on confirmation of this uh, important, uh, what is before us. Maybe I can, if I'm protected, I can go ahead to 
to do so. If it gets content, then it's easy for the president to, to rule and hit his government so that we can move forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Seven different divisions of the Court of Appeal to the extent that I think it is commendable that nobody, even including the media, wrote anything about them in the last couple of weeks when their names have been mentioned. Because these names have been circulating for the past one month or more. And yet, no any adverse comment on any of them. So it's only fair that, Mr. President, that these nominees be confirmed. And I so second, Mr. President. Thank you and God bless. The Senate, in the Committee of the Whole, considered the report of the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters on the screening of Mr. President nominees for appointment as Justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and approved the nominations of the following. Honorable Justice Jumai Hanatu Sange, Honorable Justice Chidebere Mwauma Uwa, Honorable Justice Choma Egondu Mosui Heme, Honorable Justice Haruna Simon Zamani, Honorable Justice Mao Mo Asemo Abraham Adume. Honorable Justice Obande Fesus Obu Obunia. Honorable Justice Jamilu Tuko. Honorable Justice Habib Adewale Olumiwa Abiru. Honorable Justice Stephen Jonna Ada. Honorable Justice Abubakar Sadiq Omar. Honorable Justice Mohammed Baba Idris. As Justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Jumai Hanatu Sange? Sange. Sange. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate approve? Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Jumai Hanatu Sangi Sangi as amended? <laughs> Will the Senate approve the nomination of Honorable Justice Jumai Hanatu Sangi for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Jumai Hanatu Sange is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Yes. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate Confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Stephen Jonah Ada for appointment as Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Stephen Ada, uh, Jonah Ada is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm 
the nomination of Honorable Justice Mohammed Baba Idris for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Mohammed Baba Idris is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Haruna Simon Zamani for appointment as Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Haruna Simon Zamani is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Jamilu Jama Chuko as, uh, for appointment as Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Jamilu Yama Tuko is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Abubakar Sadiq Umar for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Abubakar Sadiguma is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate approve? The Senate has approved. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Chidi Ebere Nwauma Uwa for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Chidi Ebere Nwauma Uwa is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Chioma Egondu Nwosuiheme for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Chioma Egondu Mosuiheme is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, would the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Obande versus Obunia for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Justice Oban de Fesus Obunia is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Distinguished colleagues, would the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Mao Asimo Adumain, Adumain for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Mao Asimo Adumain is hereby confirmed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. 
distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Habib Adewale Abiru I, I take that again. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the appointment of Honorable Justice Habib Adewale Abiru for appointment as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Habib Adewale Abiru is hereby confirmed as a justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Let me congratulate all the nominees hereby confirmed by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. And pray that God will give them the wisdom the enablement, the strength of character, and the will to carry out justice in our dear country. And I must also commend Mr. President for the appointment across states, irrespective of political leanings. So I know when my brother, uh, uh, Senator Dixon, was speaking, he made mention of the fact that Bayasa is represented in this list to represent the South South region of Nigeria. So for this, we are very grateful to Mr. President. I'm sure other regions are equally very grateful to Mr. President. We pray that these confirmations will lead to uh, speedy uh, dispensation of justice, particularly at that echelon of the courts, where a lot of cabotage cases are still pending since 2006. 2006, not 2016. It is now left to us and the House of Representatives to look at the possibility of how to stop certain matters from going to the Supreme Court. Because some of the things that go to the Supreme Court are distractions. Interlocutory applications should stop somewhere, but that will be left to the public hearing when we commence our Amendment of the Electoral Act and Amendment of the Nigerian Constitution. I also want to commend our brother, distinguished Senator Mongunu, and all members of the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters for the speedy way they have uh, scrutinized and screened all the papers they receive from the SSS, from the DMI from the presidency and their resumes to be able to arrive at this uh, speedy uh, conclusion today. So the single senator of Mongolo, you can take a bow. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, well done. Yes, Senator Wadada.